Hello everyone and welcome back to the Retro Recall. I hope you're doing awesome. Today we are switching gears from the PC world over to Apple Macintosh world. <laughs> Today we have an Apple ImageWriter 2 printer and a bag, <laughs> which I assume has an Apple computer in it. And I'll be honest with you, I was given this computer and was told that it all worked. And I don't know if it works. I never plugged it in, never tested it. I've had it for about a month now. And I figure what we'll do is take it all apart, get it on the bench, get it all plugged in, turn it on, and see if this machine actually does work like I was told. So, you know what? Let's get right to it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is just look at the actual system itself, or the bag, I should say. And, you know, it's a pretty hefty bag. So I imagine, you know, this system was designed for portability, as portable as it is being so goodness heavy. I mean, I'll tell you, that's quite a heavy machine. And so I'm going around here, and it is a Targus bag that we have here. So Targus would have made um, some sort of universal bag for this system. So I'm going to just open up the top here and see what we have inside. Okay, I'm going to scooch everything over here and we'll go one piece at a time because the bag is so tall that uh, I just want to make sure I get everything into kind of focus and frame there. Okay, so the first thing we have is some plastic. So <laughs> um, I'm looking here and I'm thinking that this is, yeah, so it's probably... Uh, covers of some sort, you know, it looks like uh, whether it's the printer cover, possibly, um, let's look at this, like dust covers, that looks like a keyboard cover for sure. And then we also have, uh, yeah, it looks like a, I hope, uh, yeah, okay, a computer cover as well, dust cover. So definitely cool to have all of that there. So I'm going to put those aside for now, but definitely, uh, definitely awesome to have that, especially if the system's been set up. It's definitely good to have all of that available. Okay, what else do we have here? We have a bag. Let's just open it up and put it on the bench and see what's in it. Okay, so we have in the bag, we have a wire. <laughs> Looks like an interface uh, wire, which uh, I believe is proprietary to Apple. But again, we have that here, which is good to have. And we have what looks to be a secondary one as well. So if I had a guess, one would definitely go to the printer and the other to the um, keyboard. I'm guessing this is the uh, this is the printer one, and then this would be more for the keyboard. So we do have both cables, so that's really good. And then we have our standard power supply uh, that we have here, which is also awesome to have. And we also have an angled one as well, uh, which is also great, but again, uh, de definitely have to decide or determine which side is which for that. Okay, I'll put that aside as well. I'll keep the cables on the bench for now because I just want to see what we have here. And the first thing I'll pull out is an Apple keyboard. Now, I will tell everyone, as I've told everyone on the channel, I don't have a lot of experience with Apple products or Mac products, so we're learning as we go, at least I am. And uh, yeah, I'm just happy to bring this stuff to everybody on the channel. If you, uh, again, have knowledge, intimate knowledge about this stuff, please comment below. Let me know. Send me an email through um, the, uh, the YouTube uh, email because it'll be really good to get uh, perspective on this stuff because I'm really interested in, in this, uh, these items. Okay, so we have the Apple keyboard as mentioned. And you know what? It seems to be pretty good shape for what it is. I mean, it's very yellowed. Uh, now, the underside of it obviously is not. It looks fantastic. And it's the Apple Keyboard 2 is what we have. Copyright 1990. Assembled in Malaysia. And so, yeah, so that would be the port there that I imagine would connect to the computer itself. So definitely good. I don't know if that's a power button that's there for the Mac or not. But yeah, anyway, we'll figure it out as we go. What else do we have in here? We have a mouse. 
So we have an apple mouse here. That's pretty cool. And uh, a ball mouse, no less, of course. And we have apple desktop bus mouse is what's listed here on the, um, on the uh, thing there. So uh, definitely cool to have and uh, obviously required, assuming if you're going to be using the mouse, but the clicky of the mouse the quality is still really good there and let's just look at the inside yeah there's definitely some cleaning required there's definitely some dirt and what have you on the rollers but uh, we can see how it works first and then we can do a cleaning in a future um, activity there but definitely definitely nice to have and like i said i was told this was complete so we'll see what we have so let's get into this part let's pull the computer out that i believe is a computer and there we are. We have the Macintosh Classic Computer. Yeah, I'll be honest with you. I have never, ever owned one of these in my life. And to have it on the bench is extremely, extremely cool. So let's take a look at it. I mean, we have the Apple logo and the Macintosh Classic in the front. I'm not exactly sure of, sure of the size of the CRT. I would guess it's nine inch. So keep me honest down below in the comments. I didn't do much research on this outside of just general observation and knowledge. It looks like there is a floppy disk that is currently inserted into the unit itself. So I'm hoping again, I mean, I do see probably an emergency eject sort of hole there. You'd push it in to eject the disk, but we'll see what, um, why it was left in there or if the system will boot with that as well. I'm going to turn the unit around and, you know, it's quite hefty. I love the fact it has a handle there. I think that's pretty cool uh, to hold it up. So, yeah, here we go. All right. Let's look at the back here. Definitely full of ports. You know how we talk about ports here. We have lots of ports. So let's look at the back of this unit. And it's very, very clean. Um, you know, the back looks like it has zero sun that was uh, exposed to. So that's really, really, really cool. So we have a Macintosh Classic, so Apple computer in, in uh, it's made in Singapore, um, but it shows all the, you know, compliance information. Hey, don't go inside, remove electrical shock. Uh, it could cause electrical shock. I know that, not going to open this up. I don't know how long this has been, um, you know, offline for, you know, I, I was told it was tested before I got it. So definitely, would have had definitely some capac uh, some charge in the capacitors. I, I don't have a discharge tool, nor do I, nor am I interested in doing that today. Okay, we have what looks like ventilation here. We have an on off switch here uh, in the back. It's currently off and we have power. And then down here we have what looks like, you know, a picture of a phone. So I imagine this would connect to a modem of some sort or external communication of some sort. We have here, it uh, looks like an audio port, so probably a speaker. And then we have a printer icon. So that's where the printer would go. We have what looks like SCSI interface here. Um, it looks like a picture of a SCSI interface, but you know, again, keep me honest there. We have a picture of a floppy disk here. So I imagine external floppy drive would connect to this. Now, one thing I am noticing is, now I don't know if this is just because of the case, or because of, you know, I don't think anything was damaged or shipped or, or shifted, but it's just like, I feel like this particular port is pushed in more on the left side than on the right side. So just something to be mindful of, you know, if there's any sort of issues. I've seen different videos online of these boards, the solder joints become undone on them if they don't fire up and caps are bad and power supplies in them, the internal power supply goes bad and things like that. So just things to be all mindful of. And you know what, this is starting my Macintosh classic journey. So definitely interested to uh, continue down that path. And then here we have what looks like a, you know, just a communication. It doesn't really show much there, but I imagine that would be for the keyboard to plug into again, just by process of elimination. So we have that there. And then we have another, I don't know what this is, to be honest. Um, I'm just looking at this here. So if anyone knows what this is, I have no idea. It just, it looks blank inside. It looks like it's just a hole right into the unit and then some sort of weird uh, symbol there. So I don't know if it, you can, it looks like kind of links, like a chain link together. So I don't know if it, you know, is there something that's supposed to go there for expansion uh, capabilities or you link another system to it? I'm not sure. So again, keep me honest in the comments and let me know what that is. But just looking at the system, it's just, again, absolutely clean that this system is in such great shape. And, you know, it's really cool to uh, cool to see that 
in in here and especially the condition of you know not just that but the condition of the hardware in general you know it's just a good looking machine and i've i i've grown up like i said i i was more into the pc world for sure and you know having this on the bench and i've seen like i said seen several videos about this i definitely was interested in picking one up and this you know this just came into my lap and i said no i can't say no to this so you know again so thank you to the person who gave this to the channel appreciate you very much and um definitely uh, definitely interested in exploring this and sharing this sort of thing with uh, everybody who is supports the retro recall so i think the next step here that we're going to do is get all the cables connected get all everything kind of situated on the bench so it's all looking nice on this beautiful macintosh classic and like i said I have the printer. I don't know if the printer is going to work. I don't know if any of this is going to work. I was just told, here you go. Enjoy. I, I, I was told it was tested and working fine, but you know how that goes. If you turn it on, it's been stored, you know, in my hands for over a month in my storage. And I have no idea if this is going to turn on or work, but it's all a mystery today on the retro recall. So let's get everything kind of situated on the bench. And here we are all back set up on the bench. And yeah, it was quite interesting getting all the cables kind of figured out. You know to an avid user who does this all the time with a mac uh, product uh, understood but for me i had to quickly uh you know get used to trying to connect the pass through through the mouse through the keyboard through the computer and and learn very quickly we have the macintosh classic system set up here we have the image writer 2 all set up here we also have our beautiful keyboard and our mouse as well all connected so let's get this machine powered up i guess <laughs> uh yeah i guess that's the next logical step and we'll try to see what's uh, on this system so the power button's on the back here i'll flip it on we have something coming up on the screen i have a mouse Welcome to Macintosh. And it ejected. Oh, so it was a, okay. So it's a safety disc for travel. That's interesting. So as soon as I turn it on, it ejected the disc. It must have been for travel. And we have our screen loading up there. I mean, it's working. Now, it was quite loud at the very beginning. At least I thought it was. I'm going to go to Apple and about this Macintosh. See what it is running on this system. So we have Apple Computer Inc. 1983 to 1991 software system software seven. Total memory is two megabytes of RAM. Now I don't know if that's it says system software is using one meg. I believe I believe that's what it is. I don't think that's our storage. So we'll get out of that. We'll go on a Macintosh hard drive. Now the mouse is extremely slow. It's taking me a little bit of a movement to move it here. Where's my scroll wheel? <laughs> But yeah, I mean, this is this is great that it's up and running. We have Excel on here, print shops installed on here. It'd be really cool to image this drive for sure. Okay, so under the Apple icon in our System 7, we have alarm clock, calculator, chooser, control panels, keycaps, notepad, puzzle, and scrapbook. That's, in, that's so far on here. And so I'm going to choose control panels to see if I can make that mouse go a little faster. <laughs> Definitely takes quite a bit to uh, to move it here. So we have a mouse icon here, which is great. And we'll click on that. It shows our mouse tracking. Here we go. So, oh my goodness, that's night and day. We'll go even faster on this. There we go. Perfect. I don't know why it was on very slow. And double click speed is, uh, is the middle there. That's fine. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, the screen itself is looking really good. I mean, we have network icon here. We have keyboard, general controls, uh, memory, monitors, map, labels, sharing setup. There's so much in here we can explore, but that's not for today's video. It says uh, 20 megabytes in disk, 18 megabytes available. So is this a 40 megabyte hard drive that's in this computer? Probably. Let me know in the comments what these uh, systems actually came with back in the day. But to have this on the bench, just look at it. This is beautiful and it's fully functioning so far, knock on wood. Um, I did smell a little bit when this first turned on, uh, smelled kind of like musty. It might just be that, it must have been just dust, but it'll be really good to take this apart 
uh, now that I know I'm the one to turn this on, we can, you know, uh, decharge the CRT and be um, in a position where we can look around inside and see what needs uh, some TLC. Definitely really cool to have here. Let's go under Macintosh HD again. I'm just going to see if I can actually access anything from here uh, on the system this way. So under Excel, and we have Excel version 3 from 1991. And let's click on the application. <laughs> Microsoft Excel refers 1.5 megabytes of memory. You only have one available. Do you want to open it using the available memory? Sure. Um, hopefully, don't crash the computer in the process. Uh, just putting yourself back in the day, getting this computer. Not enough memory to run Microsoft Excel. All right. Well, it's just not going to play nice. But we'll have to, you know, mark down the list to address for sure because it'd be nice to, you know, it was obviously on the system to begin with, and it'll be nice to uh, utilize that for sure. What else is on here? So we have hard help, hypercard, hypertor, hyperestimating demo, installer, laser writers samples. Um, imagine obviously that would be for a laser writer at one point. Um, you know, print shop graphics. I'm gonna see if the print shop is on here. Uh, well, we have works program. Let's click on works program and see if this is Microsoft. It is Microsoft works. Will that open? Let's see. I have a mega RAM here, guys. A mega RAM. Lots of memory. Okay, here we go. Okay, we have it working. That's a good sign. So let's go into, I think what we'll do is do a word processor just to see. So we'll click on this and open up our word processor. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because I want to test out the printer and see if it actually can work on today's video. Let's see under... Uh, print and see what comes up with the print page image writer. Okay, so it does detect the image writer or at least it has the image writer kind of installed on this um, I'm gonna hit cancel for now just because I want to just go that far. So we'll say this uh, Let's go here this is a test of the Apple image writer 2 oh shoot we should actually do this right and my goodness is it ever different to type on um, okay, uh, so we'll go to the end there. Oh, the over button is not that button. There we go. Uh, and the Macintosh. I can only imagine the people screaming at the screen right now. Oh my goodness, he's fumbling. Well, you know what? This is my really first time using this, and uh, I think it's so cool. Uh, and look, I mean, look at it. It's amazing. Okay, I'm going to turn on the Apple Image Writer to see if that even works. <coughs> It's on. I'm giving me an error, probably because it doesn't detect paper. Now, I do have, I mean, this is dot matrix, so I do have um, form feed paper available for this, but I'm just going to utilize this uh, paper for now. This is just regular 8.5 by 11 paper. Now, I don't know how to load this, to be honest. I'm being very careful with the, with the, um, yeah, okay, that must be how you load it there. Okay. So you click on paper load. It did. Okay. Perfect. Is that it? it? Okay. The error went away. Does that mean it's online? I mean, that's standard dot matrix stuff I'm doing here. I have never used an Apple image writer too. I have an Ep Epson FX 1050. By the way, if you haven't seen that video, <laughs> it's, uh, go through my videos and you'll see it. But this is, uh, you know, same kind of idea, you know, just flip the little switch there, tell it to use this versus the uh, paper, the, um, the form feed paper, use a sheet of paper instead. And then I just told it to load the paper on the front. So yeah, okay. Now, will this print? We'll go to file, print, and we'll click on print preview. Why not? We'll hit print. <laughs> so see how I was writing out my screen? That's awesome. We'll click on uh, print and see if it works. Printing in progress to cancel, hold down the uh, command, I believe that's the command key and the dot key. Nothing so far. I still have the hourglass or the, the watch with the uh, kind of weight in there. So we'll see. Okay, so nothing's happening. So I'm going to hit those two keys as it suggests. Did I freeze the computer? I can't do anything. I can move my mouse for sure, but nothing else seems to be uh, functioning, unfortunately. So I'm going to restart the system here. Happy Mac. Welcome to Macintosh. Well, thank you, Macintosh. Really excited to see if we can get this printer going. That'll be uh, really cool to see. I might just use the Apple WordPad version of WordPad instead, um, instead of utilizing, 
you know, works. So I'm going to close that off, uh, close that off, and we'll go in here. Because I think I saw it in here yet. We have Notepad in here. So we'll see if it'll print from Notepad for now. Okay, we have Notepad, so I'm going to go, hello, we are testing the, oh, the Apple Image Writer 2 on the Macintosh Classic from 19... 1990, I believe it was. There we are. A lot to get used to that, I tell you. Okay, file. Does it give me an option to print this? It does not. No. So Notepad is not the same as WordPad. All right, we're not going to be doing that then. Okay, so I'm going to open up Microsoft Works one more time. You know, I want to see if uh, we can get this going. There's definitely some sort of interface thing going on here. And I'm not sure what. Let's go into Word Processor. Let's try this again. This time I'm just going to type in hello. Let's see if it prints. And the issue is that when I'm hitting print, it's freezing up the system. And, you know, when I, you know, kind of reset the printer and, you know, we are getting something on the printer, but it literally is all garbage characters right at the moment. And it's been doing that a few times here as I've been trying to get this going. But then the system freezes like this and doesn't actually allow me to uh, do anything. So I'm going to pop this back in there and see if I can load it back up. And it is, like it looks good, hit select, looks good. But when I hold down the command, I believe that's the command button. And then the uh, period key, it says can to cancel, right? And it's just not doing anything. So I don't know if there's an interface error there or what. I'll check all my connections and I'll be right back. Okay, I think I figured it out. <laughs> I checked all the connections on the system and there was no there were no issues everything's connected correctly at least in my limited knowledge so i went in here and i was about to give up and i was just poking around and i went down to chooser because i saw a couple of uh plugs right connections or whatever and so when i did that it loaded chooser and i saw image writer so i clicked on image writer and it showed the communication port uh, which i later found out is the apple talk network selected for the interface, not the actual printer port. So I went and selected that, selected the image writer, and then it specifically said to me, you need to go to file uh, page setup after you've done that change to make sure that everything is correct. So I went up to file page setup and I loaded up the interface, which is like a kind of like, well, it's a page setup, right? That you would do for the computer versus an actual individual uh, system or uh, software. So image writer version seven, paper, US letter, the orientation's fine. Everything looks great here. So I just hit okay, that was like that. And I did a test and it was fine. So I'm just gonna change the words here again to be what we said originally is we are testing the, oh my goodness, my typing is terrible because everyone's watching me. Uh, testing the image writer two on the Macintosh classic. Uh, I was put in there from 1990 and I'm going to put 1991 because we saw a couple different date codes on here. Okay. So I've gone ahead and done that. File print. This came up here. I'm going to hit print and it comes up printing in progress, right? So I was like, okay, well, it's still not doing anything. So I hit the select key over here and I went, all right, well, there's not much going on here. And it says, please insert the next sheet of paper. So it's telling me to insert the paper, which is there. So I hit okay. Okay, so it didn't print at that time on the paper. So let me try that one more time. Let's get it from there. Let's put it back in where it needs to be. And I think it's because I didn't load the paper. Uh, we'll go select, load, there we are. Okay, I'm gonna hit file print again. And it should come up and tell me to load the paper again. I hit okay. And here we are. Hello, we are testing the Image Raider 2 on the Macintosh Classic from 1990, 1991, working perfectly. It had the wrong port set up, so it must have been on some sort of network at one point so that the communication must have been connected to the Apple network or what have you. But anyway, it works. So that was number one thing I wanted to do is, you know, can we test out the system, which we have? Can we, you know, at least type up something and get the printer working, which we have, and it's, you know, it's dot matrix, yes, but it still works, which is wonderful. Okay, I'm gonna click on the Apple icon again here. Actually, first thing I'm gonna do is get, just get rid of this uh, application, hit quit, 
And do you want to save Untitled? No, we'll unsave it. We're good to go there. And we'll close out of that as well. I want to explore this System 7 for a moment. So we have Alarm Clock installed on here. And we'll click back on this and click on Calculator. And so here we have our Apple calculator. M is going to go one plus one equals, what does it equal, everybody? Two, yay, if you guys two, you're right. Okay. Anyway, we'll close that off. And we'll go down to here again. M chooser was where I had originally just talked about control panels we've been in already. What's keycaps do here? I don't know if it's something to do to, for testing to make sure you can test all the keys or if it's something that you can reassign keys. Uh, is that what that is? You can test out different fonts. Yeah, you can. Okay, we'll close that off as well. And remember, I'm not used to this. I haven't used this. Okay, go down to Notepad, which we already knew. What's Puzzle? Let's click on Puzzle. We have a game on here. Okay, so it's one of those shift uh, items around so you can kind of frame up what the uh, picture should look like. And yeah, we'll be here for a little while, so we're not going to do that today, but uh, definitely cool to see on this. And we have Scrapbook. Let's click on that. So it's like just pictures? Okay, uh, and there's a picture of the world. Allow me to do anything with these pictures. So scrapbook, I basically, I think, is just being able to go through pictures that are on the system. So yeah, all right. Well, that's enough for today. Just wanted to test that out and uh, go from there. But here we are. We have a fully functional Macintosh Classic with a fully functional image writer too. I just had to learn how to get us all connected and know where to go in here to be able to tell it to print to that port versus not. Again, System 7, not familiar with it. You know, definitely not familiar with a computer like this. In terms of what to do next with this or what I can do with this, I would love to, you know, get another copy of System 7 and, you know, completely wipe this, get it reinstalled on the system possibly get additional software installed on here fully functioning where this was already used by someone else. You know, I'd like to just get it completely refreshed. So I, I definitely love that. And I want to get maybe a couple of games installed in here. So if you can let me know down below in the comments what I should do in terms of software, I would love your feedback, love your experience to be able to do that. And in, in terms for the computer, I mean, it has two megabytes of RAM installed. Can I upgrade that memory? I mean, it was already complaining that I wasn't able to open up one piece of software. So again, you know, let me know down in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. But I really hope you've enjoyed the experience of that I have uh, in, in unboxing or unpacking a fully functional Macintosh Classic computer from 1990, 1991. So that said, if you liked today's video, please give it a thumbs up. Please hit that subscribe button. It definitely helps this channel out. Hit the notification button. You'll be notified when I make new content such as this please leave a comment below. I respond to every comment that I can that I see. And again, give me some suggestions, give me some hints, give me some helpful tips on this. Be gentle. <laughs> and uh, again, always making new content. Really thank you to everybody and all the supporters of the Retro Recall. We will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.